Culture development in Ghana is constrained by several factors and characterized in two components limited availability of inputs to promote aquaculture development and not enough support for farmers through funding and training. My name is Enyona and this is the Ghanaian farmer. This week we'll put the spotlight on catfish fingerling culturing and we'll be speaking with Isaac Selly. He's a member of the Akosombo Zone Fish Farmers association and he has been doing this for the past nine years of course the most amazing part is he happens to be a student so he's studying in the tertiary institution whilst also doing this business we are going for a quick breather when we come back we'll engage isaac in a detailed conversation stay tuned thanks for staying coming next is a video that highlights on catfish uh, fingerling culturing in Ghana. After this video, we'll start our main conversation. Stay tuned. Ghana is a particularly interesting case because of its fast aquaculture growth and its current position as the top producer of tilapia in sub Sahara Africa. The main driver for this growth is the commercial cage farming around water starting in the mid 2000s, triggered by the release of an improved Akosombo strain, improved hatchery and fingerling conditioning technologies, and availability of locally produced quality commercial. Nevertheless, many small scale farmers across all regions continue to struggle to access, afford, and apply the optimal quantity of commercial feed in their facilities. A major objective of the government and its partners is to ensure that this rapid growth is sustainable and includes small-scale farmers and poor rural producers. So gone by was a video highlighting on the production of catfish fingerling here in Ghana. This is still the Ghanaian farmer. In case you just tune in, we are talking or we are discussing the production of catfish fingerling. Before you move to the next stage, and my guest is Isaac Sully. Isaac Sully, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, you know. Now, when we say catfish fingerling, what exactly are we talking about? Um, when we say, let's say, first, let's say fingerling. Okay. Uh, when it's a fingerling in mm -hmm. aquaculture, mm. it is just the nomenclature of how the, how uh, the fish is tamed uh, based on the development uh, processes. So when we say a finger lens, it's derived from the word finger. Okay. So maybe the size of your finger, that is a finger lens. So a fish of that size is a finger lens. Okay. Uh, normally, uh, it is between um, 10 to 15 centimeters. Okay. Yeah. That way you can call it a finger lens. Okay. Yeah. So okay. a catfish finger lens is a, a fish, a, a catfish fish mm. out of a size of uh, 10 to 15 centimeters long. Mm. Yeah. How do you come by the fingerling? Do you get it from the parent in the water lake or you produce it artificially? We produce it artificially, but first you, have, you need to get a broodstock, the parents. Okay. So the parents, you will get it from uh, the Fisheries Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the uh, people that sell the broodstock. Mm -hmm. the, even tilapia or catfish, they have to sell you the broodstock, which is the uh, Clarence Garipinos. Yeah, that is what we do in Ghana. Okay. So you have to get the booster from there. Then you can do your spawning. Then you get your fingerlings. Okay. Yeah. So, how much is the the spawning sold or the the, the this thing you the mentioned? Bootstock. The booster. The booster. How much yeah. is it sold for? Uh, currently, it's about fifty cities per kilogram. Fifty cities per kilo. Yeah. So how many do you buy? Uh, you buy as much as you depend can. Depend on the size of your farm. Yeah, not depending on the size of your farm per se, but maybe depending on what you want to produce, your okay. target production. Right. Yeah, that is what you buy on. Okay. So when you buy that, what do you do next? Yeah, when you buy that, you when you bring the uh, brood stock, uh, we assume that uh, it is a mature brood stock, but you have to keep it at least a three days period before you can use it. So we have the artificial hormone. So when you bring the brood stock, uh, the females, 
you inject them with the artificial uh, hormone, which is uh, five mil to uh, a kilogram of, uh, weight fish. So you, then you leave it for about eight hours, then you strip it, then you take the meal, the, uh, the meal you got it, you take the milk out, sprinkle it on it, and then you lay it in your hatchery. For maybe 24 hours, you are done. It's ready. How long do you hatch them for? 24 hours. 24 hours? Yeah, then okay. they are hatched. Yeah. Okay, so after the hatchery, what next? Yeah, after the hatchery, there your work begins. Okay. Uh, the hard work begins. Uh, the siphoning, then you have to wait for a three days period for them to absorb the, the yolk sac before you start feeding them. Yeah. So basically, after the hatchery, it is how you manage them now. Okay. Yeah. How many days does it take for me to see the small fingerling? A small fingerling? Yes. Uh, Before the eggs or whatever it is that you have kept for 24 hours or how many days you yeah. mentioned, how long is it before I see yeah, something like... By three days now, you should be seeing a fry, something like a tap pool. Okay. Yeah, you can see it clearly. By like, three days? Yeah, by three days, you, okay. you should see it clear, right. like a tap pool. Okay. Yeah. How many pieces of those can you keep in one tank? Yeah, the, those ones you can pick, you can keep as maybe a 20,000 in a, in a square meter. Mm. Yeah, at that stage. Okay. Yeah. And do you feed them during yeah, you, you, this hatchery you, you, stage? Uh, after the hatchery. Okay. Three, so, three days after the hatchery, mm -hmm. you start feeding them. What do you feed them? You with? feed them with, uh, people use the atemia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a high protein feed. Mm. Yeah. You basically use the atemia. Are there any mortalities during this process? Yes, please. There are. How does it yeah. come about? Um, you know, the catfish are very fragile okay. at their initial stages. Right. And then... Uh, contamination and then keeping them right keeping their um, uh, their system clean mm. yeah if you don't keep the system clean mm -hmm. you, you are likely to have mortality huge mortalities okay yeah all right when you buy from the fishery commission yeah how many do you get from one of the boots uh, oh, okay yeah yeah one female mm -hmm. uh, one female fish can give you between 40,000 to 100,000 eggs 40,000 yeah Two hundred thousand from just one, one female. fish. It will get one female fish. Okay. But uh, as to where whether they will hatch, mm -hmm. they will all hatch mm -hmm. is the question. Is that likelihood not all of them will hatch? Yeah. And what it's, it's a fifty-fifty uh, uh, possibility? Yeah. What happens? Yeah, there sometimes uh, mm -hmm. maybe the meal you are using, mm -hmm. the meals are not very good. Okay. Yeah, and then also maybe uh, the system you are running, the water quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, you didn't change the water on time, the oxygen depreciates, mm -hmm. and then uh, ammonia, mm -hmm. ammonia build up in the system. It mm -hmm. will kill them. Okay. Yeah. What what sort of water is best mm -hmm. if, like you are doing, like yeah. you produce the fingerling and people, outgoers come and buy, yeah. what kind of water is good for it? A is it tap water or the one from the water leak? <laughs> That's a big question. Currently, we mm -hmm. are having issues with the Volta Lake, to be frank. Okay. Yeah, uh, with the high rate of contamination and all that. Okay. So, when you are using the Volta Lake, you need to uh, filter, do a lot of work on it before you can use it. A lot of work like Like work. filtration. Okay. Trying to do some uh, filtration mm -hmm. systems mm -hmm. before using it. Especially introducing it uh, to hatch your eggs mm -hmm. or uh, for your fries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to do a lot of work on it. Okay. Yeah before you can use it. Right, so we were speaking on the feeding before we, we went back. How many times do you feed them at that stage? Yeah. Uh, literature says three times, but I feed as much as uh, maybe eight times in a day. Because uh, the reason why I do that is mm -hmm. that um, the catfish, mm -hmm. they are very carnivorous. They feed on each other. Okay. So uh, I assume that if you feed them, that when you are full, you don't have to chase someone. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I feed them maybe uh, every hour, mm. hour on the hour, mm. till the day is over. What kind of climatic condition is suitable? Yeah, a temperature around 30 degrees is very okay for them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how long do you keep them for at your uh, pond or inside your pond before you begin to sell? Um, I'll say a period of roughly about uh, two months. Okay, that, that's, that's eight about weeks? eight weeks. Okay. Yeah, because they move from the hatchery in mm -hmm. the hatchery after mm -hmm. they hatch. Mm -hmm. I keep them there for 
15 days. Okay. Then I move them into the earthen pond for another 15 days. That's 30 days. Mm -hmm. Then I bring them into the tapole tanks outside. Why do you go through that stages? Yeah, you see, this these things they vary from farm to farm. Mm -hmm. You will go to another farm. Maybe the person hatches and then pour them directly into the pond. Okay. Yeah, but you have to study your farm and know the uh, the lineup, what works for you. Mm. Uh -huh. So you don't go by copying and say. This person is doing like this. I must also do it like that. No, I see. Yeah, it varies from farm to farm. Okay, so we'll be showing viewers the earthen pond you yeah, have, yeah. and then the tapoli pond, yeah. and then where you do the, the hatchery hatch yeah. itself. Yeah. Okay, so when you're about to sell, how do you sell? Do you count it one, two, three, four, five? I imagine counting this. Yeah, <laughs> this tiny fish. Do you count or you just put it on a scale, and then you're able to tell this kilo is going for this amount? Yeah, unfortunately. Um, the tilapia, mm -hmm. we, we do average weight and then based on that, maybe we just fetch and then give. But the catfish is not like that. We count one, one, one. You count it? Every sing, single one, one, one. So one is how much? One, uh, depending on the stage, but I sell between 60 to 1 CD 20 pesos. 60 to uh, 60 1 CD? 60 pesos to 1 CD 20 pesos. Okay. Yeah, depending on the size of the fish. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how much did you invest when you were starting this business? In starting this, uh, the catfish hatchery, I actually invested about 30,000 Ghana cities. What and what went into the 30,000? Uh, getting the place, uh -huh. uh, the land, uh, electricity, uh -huh. and then putting up some structures. Right. Yeah. First, I only started with one tapoli and then uh, two of my hatchery okay. uh, tanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, how is the marketing bit? Because this program is not just to educate people, but we also want to let them know the marketing demands or availability. How is the marketing bit like? How do you go about the marketing? <laughs> marketing. Uh, I'll say that marketing, uh, marketing catfish, uh, there's, there's already market. Okay. Right now, I can't meet my demand. Really? Yeah, I'm unable to meet my demand. Who and who do you sell to? Uh, the people along there. Uh, yeah, the Akosombo stretch, and then uh, people from outside, like what I've sent to uh, Bibiani, Takwa, and all that. But I looked like the quantity you placed the, the, the determines whether I will attend uh, to you quickly or not. Hey, so you give priorities? Or oh, not really priorities, mm. but maybe like I have an MOU with a uh, one lady, okay. so I have to supply her first Hello. before. Uh, any other VIP customer. Oh no, he, he, <laughs> that one is a, no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy yeah. when I meet business people who say this is how yeah. the marketing is going. Yeah. It encourages others to also venture into yeah. that space. It means that we need more yeah, yeah, yeah. farmers in yeah. this space. Yeah. Okay, now demand is even higher yeah. than supply. supply yeah. Just like you're, you're yeah. saying. Yeah. In a month or in weeks, I don't know how your sales is like. Whether it's sale, it's monthly sales or weekly, but are you able to give me an estimate on average of sales you make? Yeah, averagely, in a uh, in a month, mm -hmm. uh, if all things be equal, you don't have much mortalities. Mm -hmm. You can do fifteen to twenty thousand. Fifteen to twenty thousand yeah. in a month. Yeah. Okay. If I want to go into catfish production, do I need some special training? Uh, yeah, you need a special training. Okay. Yeah, because um, the catfish, mm -hmm. uh, it's very dicey. Mm. Uh, you can't do it. The hatching you can hatch. Okay. Even in your kitchen at your backyard, mm -hmm. you can hatch. Mm -hmm. But keeping them, mm -hmm. uh, managing them, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a whole lot. Now let's talk about the management bit. Yeah. How do I manage the catfish? Yeah. If I want to be an outgrower and I buy from you, yeah. How do I manage it? Oh yeah. To ensure less mortality. From that point, mm -hmm. I think your work is limited. Okay. Yeah, your management uh, uh, practices or uh, what you put in is less. Okay, so an outgrower compared has less work to do compared to, to the hatchery. Okay, yeah. so as a hat someone who is into the hatchery, how is your maintenance work like? In case somebody also wants to go into the hatchery and not the outgoing, what are your maintenance culture? Yeah, the maintenance, uh, the first one is the biosecurity. Uh, it's very important in the hatchery. Okay. And then... Uh, How do you mean biosecurity? Break it down. Your practices that can bring a uh, disease mm -hmm. into your uh, hatchery. Mm. Uh, you try to uh, limit them, just like what we have here, the food bath. Yeah, so when you were coming, I'll let my viewers see. When 
when you're coming from the house to yes, the farm, farm yes. you need to do food bath. bath. Yeah, there's a food bath. And the water contains what? Uh, it's a chlorine mixed with uh, parazol. Okay. Yeah. I have to always step in that yeah, before I walk in into the farm. Yeah. Any detergent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Aside that, what other practice do okay. I need to adhere to keep up consistently? Yeah. Uh, your water quality. Okay. Yeah, because uh, they are aqua, mm. like like water mm. organisms. Mm -hmm. So their environment matters to mm. them very much. Mm. So uh, you keep your uh, water quality at the optimum level. Okay. Yeah, and then you always siphon the the dead. If you see every mortality, you pick it out. Mm. Uh, the fish, the excess feeds, mm -hmm. the one they haven't eaten, you try to siphon them out. Okay. Yeah, quickly. Okay. Yeah, else it will contaminate the the rest. Uh, yeah, the okay. water and then ah, uh, in, by morning there will be have, trouble. Yeah. yeah have, have you ever experienced that before? Oh yeah, very much. How many? How often? When very, you started? Very, very often. Okay. Very Even at this level. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, you you can Sometimes everything is clear. Everything mm. is clean. Yet. Mm. Uh, they you have challenges. Yeah, they just decide to die. And oh, okay. That, that is <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they decided to die. Yeah, yeah they decided okay. to die. Okay. Now, how that is one thing. Mm -hmm. That is why um, uh, uh, the catfish hatchery is just like it's almost like a, a plus one minus one mm. kind of business. Yeah. So if uh, you are not strong, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can't move forward. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's almost like a plus one minus. There you do it today. Many. Yeah, you do it today. You are there. Okay. Tomorrow, no. This problem. Yeah. So okay. You have to start I realized that when we came into the farm, yeah. you set up, you opened the pipe. Yeah. Um, is there a pipe or it is the water lake you're pumping inside? It's the water lake. Why are you doing that? Because there's already water in the tank. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, I gave it a, a, a gauge. There's a certain level. There's a certain level that it has to take, especially for the fishes there, because based on the quantity inside, mm -hmm. we give it that that level. Mm. Uh -huh, that the water should be there. Mm. Uh -huh. So the water is not there as uh, I came in, so I have to bring it up. Okay. Now you did say that starting off, you buy uh, the boot stock. Boot. Boot stock yeah, the from parents. the parent from uh, fishery commission. Yeah, the fishery now after I mean going forward, can I do my own? Yes, you extraction. You can, yeah, yeah, you can do your. Own. Is it allowed? Yeah, it's 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 allowed because even sometimes you go to them and they are not having the boot stock. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, it is best if uh, you can also. I mean, normally, what I do is that um, when I uh, I produce or the people that buy for me, mm. yeah, when they, uh, they they are about harvesting, mm -hmm. I move to their farm and then pick the very big ones out and then keep them as broodstock. It okay. is yeah, genetically. Uh, I assume that as they they grow faster, mm -hmm. their uh, their offsprings mm -hmm. will also grow faster. Faster. Yeah. Okay. So, um, at this level, are you able to produce or do this business the whole year? Yeah. What, ha what are some of the basic challenges that you would call on the fishery commission to address in this sector, in the fishery sector or uh, fish farming sector? Fish farming. Yes. One is the, uh, the high feed cost. Okay. And then right. the, the, the second will be the uh, education the, uh, the farmers mm. yeah, on like places to get their uh, seeds Okay. From, yeah. Okay. Because it's very important. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, gone by was an insightful conversation with Isaac Selly, and he is uh, the owner or the founder of Selly Lom, what again? Farms and Consult. Farms and Consult on social media. In case I skip any question, make sure to catch up with him for him to help you. Still on the subject of catfish fingerling production in Ghana. Somewhere last year, 2021, the Fishery Commission distributed over 35,000 fingerling to farmers to promote uh, the production of fish uh, in Ghana. Now, we caught up with Mr. Emmanuel Masha. He is scientist with the CSIR Water Research Institute, Aquaculture Research and Development Center. And this is what he has to say with regards to tilapia or catfish production here in Ghana. I am currently two species are mainly cultured in Ghana. Um, that is the catfish and the tilapia. But however, there are other species that is of culturable importance, which we have started developing for now. Um, that is the Heterotis niloticus, um, commonly called the bony tank. But if you look at the aquaculture industry as a whole, tilapia constitutes more than 80 to even 90% of the culture species that we have. 
um, tilap, uh, catfish and heterotis just form less than the 20 percent um, but there has been a, a different trend within these past years um, coming uh, most preference is now being geared towards the culture of catfish and the main species that is being used is the clarias garipinus um, so if you go to areas like the Ashanti region, the Brahafu region, most of these farmers are involved in the culture of catfish. If you look at um, fish farming in general, you know the aquaculture sector is supporting what we are getting from the capture fisheries. Um, our fisheries mainly are from the capture, that's the marine sector, um, the freshwater, and also from the culture. The culture just forms about 12% of what we are producing as a country. So with the introduction of uh, aquaculture, more and more people are getting into its culture because of one, the relatively ease of putting fish in a confined environment for the fish to grow. Now catfish now has been identified as one of the promising um, fish species that is coming up. So it's rather gaining prominence, I mean over the years now. Um, currently fish in general forms close to about 3 to 5 percent of our GDP which I mean it tells you that the culture is very important to our economy so more and more people are getting into it now for the catfish there are some challenges that farmers are facing in this culture especially the selection of the brew stocks the brew stocks that we are currently using some classify it as coming from Nigeria and other neighboring countries but as a country, we are in the process of trying to develop our own um, culture, uh, brewstock base. For that tilapia, we've bypassed that stage that most people are, I mean, getting their brewstock from uh, water research industry, that's Akosombo, where we produce the brewstock. So for the catfish, we are in the process of also developing the brewstock base that we are using currently. Now, the culture is faced with certain challenges, uh, especially with the seed production getting to the fry stage to the fingerling stage most farmers lose close to about 60% um, of what they have produced and that is the research now we are currently going um, conducting to find ways and means of improving survival of the early stages of its culture <laughs>
So the market trend currently, you know, um, the Ghanaian market, um, it's mainly our delicacy is catfish. We are now getting to understand the uh, uh, tilapia. We are now getting to understand the catfish. So then now we have two various type of markets that we sell now. We have the those that do the grill. Normally we call it point and kill, and we have the smoking size. And one thing too is um, the catfish also has a very good um, export potential, for which um, other European countries we have people who comes to buy from us. Some will like you to smoke it for them. They buy the smoke one. Others will buy it live. They will process it to smoke it for the local market, like the I mean um, the Adabraka markets. Some supply to offices and those. So it depends on who is coming to buy. So you also get to know how you are growing your fish too. Because the catfish, I mean, the, those who buy for the point and kill, normally don't buy less than one kilo per fish. So they buy like 1.5, 1 kilo, 1.2 kilos and above. But then those buying for the smoking size, buy from 400 grams to like 800 grams. That is okay for them because it has less fat. And also whenever you are smoking, it gets to dry very well. Yes, so that's about the market. Thank you so much for joining us. This program is brought to you by Lizzie and Lee Tomato Mix. If you want to buy any of this in bulk, their numbers are displayed on the screen. You can call them and they'll deliver to your doorstep. Get interactive, share your views, your questions with us on our social media platform, The Ghanaian Farmer, on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. It is Ghanaian Farmer. Make sure to subscribe and also press on the notification button so you get to see all the uploads we do this and every day on YouTube. My name is Enyonam, but when you see me, you can call me Ghana's Finest Farmer. I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.